Hi, I'm Lawrence Cornfield. Today we have a special edition of Building San Francisco, Stay Safe, where we're going to be talking about San Francisco's earthquakes, what you can do before an earthquake in your home to be ready, and after an earthquake to make sure that you're comfortable staying in your home while the city recovers. In this episode of Stay Safe, we have Alicia Johnson from San Francisco's Department of Emergency Management. Hi, Alicia, thanks for coming. Hi, Lawrence, it's a pleasure to be here with you. And I wonder if you can tell us what you think people can do to get ready for what we know is a coming earthquake in San Francisco. Well, one of the most important things people can do is to make sure to have a plan to communicate with people who live both in and out of state. So having an out of state contact to call, text, or post on your social network is really important. And then being able to know how you're gonna communicate with your friends and family who live near you, where you might meet them if your home is uninhabitable. After an earthquake, how long do you think we might be without utilities and other kinds of services before things restored to normal in San Francisco? It really depends on the severity of the earthquake. We advise that people be prepared for a minimum of 72 hours, that's three days, but it also helps to know that you might be without services for up to a week or more, depending on how heavy the shaking is and how many aftershocks we have. What kinds of uh, neighborhood and community involvement might you want to have before an earthquake to make sure that you're going to be able to have the support you need. It's important to really have a good relationship with your neighbors and with your community. Go to those community events, shop at local businesses, have an, a, a reciprocal relationship with them so that you know how to take care of yourself and who you can rely on and who can take care of you. It would be important to have a battery operated radio in your home so you can keep track of what's happening in the community around you and, and how you can communicate with other people. One of the things that seems important is to have uh, access to your important documents. Yes, it's important to have copies of those and also store them remotely. Uh, so a title to a home, a passport, a driver's license, any type of medical records that you might need after a disaster, back those up, put them on a remote drive or store them somewhere on the cloud. The same is true with any vital information you have on your computer. It's important to, again, back that up, have that on the cloud in case your hard drive doesn't work anymore. In your home, you should be prepared as well. Absolutely. And let's take a look at the kinds of things you might want to have in your home. Alicia, we have no water. What are we going to do about water? It's really important to have extra water in your house. So you want to have either bottled water or a five gallon container of water able to, to use on a regular basis, both for bathing and cooking, as well as for drinking. And we have this big container, but also in people's homes they have a hot water heater, which usually contains dirty. Absolutely. If you clean your water heater out regularly, you can use that water for drinking, showering, bathing, cooking as well. What other kinds of things might people uh, have to have around their home to make sure they can be uh, safe It's after important to have extra everyday items. So buy a couple extra cans of canned food that you can eat without any preparation. So here's a giant can of green giant canned corn, and this, a manual can opener, your electric can opener is not gonna be working. Absolutely. So you need not only to have one, but to know where to find it in your kitchen. Yes. Right? Yes. Okay. So in addition to canned goods, we're gonna have fresh food and you have to preserve that. And I know we have a, an ice chest here. Absolutely, having an ice chest on hand is really important because your refrigerator likely will not be working right away. So it's important to have something else that can store cold foods and something that you might be able to take with you if you have to leave your home. And here, this is my very own personal emergency supply box from my house. I hope you have an alternate one at home while it's, oh while it's here. Oh my god, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> um, in, in this is really important. You should have flashlights that have batteries, fresh batteries, or a hand crank flashlight. Um, I, I also, have one of them right here. Oh, good. Look at that. Excellent. <laughs> That's great. Additionally, you're going to want to have candles, um, a whistle, possibly a compass as well. Um, markers to help label things if you need to, to tell people you're safe in your home or that you've left your home. Right. I'm um, okay and I'm down. I'm go, I'll meet you at such Exactly. And such. Okay, exactly. Um, waterproof matches are a great thing to have as well. 
We have matches here and uh, my spare glasses. And your spare glasses. Also, if you have medication, you should keep it with you or have access to it. If it needs to be refrigerated, make sure it's in your ice box. And inside, just to point out for you, we have spare batteries. Absolutely, right. very important. We have a little first aid kit. Mm -hmm. It's got bandages and so on in it. So lots of different kinds of batteries and another spare flashlight. So Alicia, what else can we do to prepare our homes for an earthquake so we don't have damage? One of the most important things you can do is to secure your valuables and breakable items. So make sure your TV is strapped down to your entertainment cabinet or your, to your wall so it doesn't move. Also important is to make sure that your bookcase is secure to the wall so that it doesn't fall over and your valuables or breakables don't break on the ground. Becoming prepared is not that difficult. Taking care of your home, making sure you have a few extra everyday items on hand helps make the difference. And uh, that contributes dramatically to the way the city as a whole can recover. If you are able to control your own environment, your own house, and your own safety, and your own recovery, your neighbors are doing the same, the city as a whole can be a more resilient Absolutely. City. We're all proud to live in San Francisco, and being prepared helps us stay here. So thank you so much for joining us today, Alicia. I really appreciate Absolutely, it. Absolutely, Lawrence. It's my pleasure. And thank you for joining us here on another edition of Building San Francisco Stay Safe. We will be having more. Please join us again in the future and stay safe.